Okay, so again, welcome to the part two of my video lessons. If you're not a member, if you're not still a member of my YouTube channel, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Secretary Markey, for and click and click the notification button for the series of my lesson. So this time we will go to discuss the basic sampling de designs. And there are two types of basic sampling designs. Number one, we have the non-probability sampling. And the second is the probability sampling. So let's start with the non-probability sampling, meaning does not require random randomization. Example of non-probability sampling, number one, are judgment or purposive sampling meaning these samples are selected based on expert subjective judgment or pre-specified criteria. Second is the accidental or haphazard sampling, meaning the researcher uses whatever comes at hand and whoever is available. Example, you are going to enter with the first 20 persons in your school about our president. So this is an example of an accidental or haphazard sampling. The third one is the quota sampling, meaning the data collectors are given quotas to meet. And the last one, or example of a quota sampling are interview housewives until they reach a certain quota in housewife. And the last one is the snowball technique. It is used when studying hidden population, such as HIV positive students or commercial sex workers or drug dependent. Now let's proceed with probability sampling design. So what are these main types of probability sampling design? Number one is the SRS or the simple random sampling. This design consists of selecting a group of sampling units from a population of units in such a way that each sample of size has the same chance of being selected. So what are the advantages? I hope you can screenshot that on my screen. Advantages and disadvantages of simple random sampling. So when to use simple random sampling? If the population is not widely spread geographically and if the population is more or less homogeneous with respect to the characteristics under study. Next is the random sampling. How to do a random sampling? First, you pick a name of the hat, of the hat. so that's what we call a hat technique, the number random table, and the random number generator. So that's easy. The second probability sampling design is the stratified random sampling, meaning it is one obtained by separating the population elements into a non-overlapping groups called the strata and then selecting a simple random sample from each strata. So reasons for using stratified random sampling, the data of known possession are wanted for certain subdivision of the population. There is an administrative convenience and the sampling problems may differ markedly in a different part of the population. So certification may produce a gain in production in the estimates of characteristics of the whole population. So the cost for observation in the survey may be reduced by certification of the same population elements into convenient groupings. So what are the allocation of the sample? Things to consider. Number one, the variability of observation within each stratum, the cost of obtaining an observation for each stratum, and what are the ways of allocating samples per stratum? We have Neyman allocation, proportional allocation, and equal allocation. So what are the advantages? So here they are, and this screenshot, and the disadvantages. So when to use our stratified random sampling if the population is such that the distribution of the characteristics under consideration is very sporadic or concentrated in small scattered points of the population. If precise estimates are desired for a certain parts of the population and if sampling problems differ in the various sections of the population. So how to do stratified sampling data into device divided into subs subgroups such as what we call the strata and the strata are based on specific characteristics such as age, educational level, etc. And then after that, you can use this random sampling within each strata. 
The third one is the systematic sampling. It is a systematic sample is preferable when the population is ordered and the population size is large. So what are the advantages? The disadvantages. So when to use? If the ordering of population is essentially random, if there is a slight stratification in the population, and when certification with numerous data is used. So when how to use systematic sampling, all data is sequentially numbered and every nth piece of data is chosen. The last sampling we have is the cluster sampling. It's a good frame listing population element. Either it's not available or very costly to obtain. So the cost of obtaining observation increases as the distance separating the elements increases. So what are the advantages of cluster sampling? Let's do the screenshot. The disadvantages. So when to use? Clustering is used rather than individual selection when the lowest cost per element more than compensates for its disadvantages. So if the population can be grouped into clusters where individual population elements are known to be different with respect to characteristics under study. So how to use it? First is data is divided into clusters, usually geographic, the random sampling used to choose clusters, and all data used from selected clusters. That's it. So thank you so much for listening and please uh, watch my third part of this video about the sample size determination. Thank you and God bless everyone.